Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. Hey guys, uh, let's do it. I totally went to the gym and didn't get five guys. Uh, no, I did. Let's go. Uh, I hope you guys are all doing well. Um, all right, yes, we're here to learn about history and, you know, different countries and whatever, but I also want to make sure it's, it's a place you guys can come and, uh, rewind and, uh, unwind. Rewind, unwind. So I hope you guys are all doing well. Really do. Let's uh, find out about four ways British and American people are very different. Lost in the Pond. Uh, great channel. Love him. Been watching him for years. I kind of went on like a year and a half hyenas or gap of not watching him. And then he just blew up, which I'm, I'm so happy about. Preemptive like, how are we different? Let's go. If you aren't ready to learn about how we are different, then there's the door. You're in the wrong class, my friend. Or just sit in the back and chill. That's fine, too. Draw on the desks. Spitball, whatever. Okay. <clears throat> Let's go. But in America, or at least in the Midwest, but in America, or at least in the Midwest, my attempts at toilet humor have often been met with TMI, which to my chagrin does not mean tickle me insane, but too much information. Hello, I'm Lawrence, and I'm on a quest to uncover all of the memos that Britain and America lost in the pond, and one of those memos pertains to people. What could be more important to the foundation of a country than its people, except maybe tectonics? And one thing I can <laughs> say True. about British people is we don't generalize, and that's why I'm doing a video called Ways British and American People Are Very Different. Believe you me, everything you hear in this video is absolutely true. Isn't it weird? Maybe I just think that I can do this, but I think that I can... So British and American people, two diverse countries, but diverse in similar ways. And so it's like when you see a British person in America, I, I almost feel like I have this like sixth sense and I, I can kind of just tell right away by looking at them. I don't know if like we part our hair differently or we just have a slightly different normal facial expression like standard but i feel like there's just something slightly different in the demeanor of europeans and americans that you can kind of pick up on uh intuitively except this sentence because in truth it's impossible to get this video right both countries are made up of millions of people no one person is the same so some of the generalizations i'm about to make about americans could yeah. be true of some british people <clears throat> and vice versa it's just that on the whole pound for pound or dollar for dollar there are certain things that separate british people from americans and having lived in both countries now for at least a hundred years, I'm here to tell you what those things are. Here are four ways Qualified. that British and American people are very, very different. Funnily enough, the first entry on this list doesn't require any generalizations because it's backed by hard, cold science. And by science, I mean the census. Both countries have them. And from this data, we can determine the cultural backgrounds that make up the people of Britain and America. I would think they're pretty similar. Let's take a look at each country's top five ancestral groups, starting with Britain. Let me, uh, so the U.S. is going to be German, number one, English. They often, because of the term African-American, we, we often, uh, in, in a census data, kind of clump in. That, that would be like saying you know, European American, you know, it, because of the, um, obviously what happened with slavery and, and record keeping, it's, it's very difficult, especially for African Americans to know their, their ancestors, you know, go back far enough exactly what country they came from. And so using African American as a census data, I think is a little misleading, but it, you know, what can you do? And so African American, <clears throat> English, German, Italian, Irish, maybe, are the big ones. 
actually in this case the entire UK. 37% of us are Anglo-Saxon which accounts for how I'm 1500 years old. 22% of people living in the UK are of Irish descent and this is not just the people living in Northern Ireland. Irish immigrants have been coming to Britain for hundreds of years and if they hadn't we wouldn't have had John, Paul and George and the Beatles might have been named Ringo. A fifth of people living in Britain claim Western European ancestors. Is Ringo the only, are the three other Beatle members from Ireland? Ancestry. 9%, and I believe this minutely includes Western European ancestry. 9%, and I believe this minutely includes yours truly, come from a Scandinavian background, which is definitely why I'm so good at assembling IKEA furniture. 4% of people in Britain trace their ancestry to Pakistan and India. That makes sense. In America, the numbers are quite different, but there are some surprises along the way. Did you know that in the United States of America, the largest ancestral group... Incestral? I just said ancestral. <laughs> he pointed it out on Twitter. I gotta get a Twitter account. Which is thankfully not a word, but you can quite imagine what it would mean. In the United States, it's the German, largest right? ancestral group is German. Apparently. To me, that, that wasn't really a surprise. I, I, I just feel like, you know, the makeup of America today is largely due to immigration in the 19th century, in the 1800s, and I believe a lot of Germans were part of that. Um, and so, sure, maybe a while ago I would have picked uh, British, English, but I mean, it's, it's not that mind-boggling. 13.6% of Americans self-report German ancestry, and if you think that that dates back to either of the world wars, that's not entirely accurate. The majority of German Americans came here in the 19th century, yep. so if you encounter any Americans with German sensibilities or facial structure, whatever that means, then that's why. And there's a good chance you'll encounter a German American in one of the cold states like Minnesota, Wisconsin, or the Dakotas. I am. The second largest ancestral group in the United States English? are African Americans. Okay, yeah, here. I, I told you what my kind of beef with this um, data point, but I understand why it is the way, you know? Because clearly, uh, isn't it kind of strange saying like African American ancestry and German ancestry? It's like, well, and, and it's because, of course, we can't uh, accurately. We, we don't have the data records of, of slave owners documenting place of origin of, of, of slaves, you know. Who comprise about 12.5% of the overall population. And conversely to the German ancestry groups, the highest concentration of African Americans is in the South. And historically, of course, this is largely tied to the fact that many African Americans in the South are descendants of slaves that were kept and later freed from plantations there. And here's a demographic that sets America apart from Britain. It's largely governed by geography, and that's Mexican Americans. 11% of Americans self-reported Mexican ancestry, which might account for- Why is this that low, actually? Why I read the other day that Cinco de Mayo is more widely celebrated in the United States than it is in Mexico. Mind you, you might be able to say something similar about St. Patrick's Day. Every March, without fail, Americans turn green. Not literally, unless they've had too much alcohol that night. Literally. And so it's no coincidence that 10% of Americans self-report Irish ancestry. Of course, if you're like me and you're 15... And I learned, okay, because I was so certain of my, I was like, well, I'm, I'm, I, I, I know I have three ingredients. I have French, I have English, and I have Irish. And I believe it's, I forget what it is. It, it's some weird percentage. I forget. I, I think I'm equal parts English, Irish, and then the rest. 
French, but I don't think it's 33, 33, 33. 100 years old and an Anglo-Saxon. There's a very good chance that some Americans will be quick to tell you that they have a little bit of you in them. Not like that. I just mean a little bit of English, right? 7% of Americans self-reported English ancestry. That was an abbreviated look at the ancestral makeup of both countries. And for not having the time to discuss all groups in this one video, I apologize. But then that would probably be very British of me. Let's take a look at some of the unique tendencies of the people of both countries. If there's one thing that really sets people apart, it's how polite they are. So who's more pol- I know he's about to tell me, but... I mean, he has been, Lawrence has been in both countries, so he'll be able to tell me. I, I don't exactly know which would be stereotypically ruder. Uh, like, if you were to say, like, New Yorker, I've, I feel like people te tend to be more rude when they live around people constantly, like in big cities. And so it's not so much that, like, if you live in the city, there's this something in this in your DNA that makes you a more rude person than someone in, in rural Texas. It's just because in rural Texas, you see the same people or rural anywhere. You, you have to be friendly, whereas someplace like New York City, it's j just got to be so... You know, I, I lived in New York um, going to college at St. John's, you know, for a few years. And just the noise and and the nonstop it, it's just you get fed up and and you if you pass someone on the street there's a good chance you'll never see them again in your life and so it's just and so I guess it depends. And how fun they are at parties. And don't worry, I'm not about to extol the virtues of the famed British politeness while asserting that Americans are rude, because that's not my experience. There are rude people in both countries, but that rudeness usually manifests in a very similar way and wouldn't make for a very entertaining video. Actually, Fair enough. mine. Can we put it on the list? The truth is, people <laughs> are entertaining video. Actually, mine. Can we put it on the list? The truth is, people in both countries know how to be polite when they want to. The difference here is the manner in which they do it. In my experience, British people will go to greater lengths to let you know that they're listening. What do I mean by this? Well, you're talking to me. Not literally, hey. you're watching a video. But let's say you are talking to me. Hey. You're conveying very important information right now. And so in between every single word, I'm going to go, yes, mm -hmm, yes, yes, yeah, mm hmm Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll stop now. That's essentially the way it goes. As a result, the conversation ends up being twice as long, and all of those efforts to display that you were listening meant that you didn't hear a bloody <laughs> thing. British people... A problem with me, biggest problem with me, and I don't know if it's ADD or I'm just a bad listener. I'm not always a bad listener. I just mean in conversation... I tend to be so socially awkward in ways that not, it's just like when I'm in a conversation, I have the terrible habit of trying to think about what I'm going to say next while the person's talking to me. And so I probably come across as very rude and, and obviously like, you're not listening to me. You're just nodding and thinking about what you're going to say next. That is going to have nothing to do with what you just said. I, people are very good at that and I should know because I'm very good at that aren't I right we're also good at adding on tag questions that's when we make a statement but in order to not appear confrontational we add on a little question at the end so for example Marmite is brilliant isn't it Americans would never do that they'd simply state Marmite is awesome that's never gonna happen I remember it's a beautiful picture Isn't it? How often? This is awesome. Isn't it? Yeah, I guess. I, I, I don't think I would say that. I remember when I visited home last year and we were in a restaurant. I feel like saying, isn't it? Kind, it's kind of like you're like aggressively asking someone to agree with you, you know? I guess I'm saying, you know, is kind of like saying, isn't it? 
and the staff apologized profusely to my wife because I can a restaurant and the staff are going to happen. I remember when I visited home last year and we were in a restaurant and the staff apologized profusely to my wife because I can't remember why, but I remember it not being warranted in the least. The point is British politeness is often governed by the need to save face. That's not a reference to the A-team. Don't get me wrong, it's also about being friendly, but in America, I think that's I think that's the same here. I think that's universal. That's all it's about. I very rarely feel like Americans are trying to let me down gently. They just tell me I suck outright. I'm joking. It could be argued that Americans in this sense are just more practical. Much Look, I, I prefer straight. I hate. I, I cannot emphasize how much I despise sugarcoating, you know, like when I can tell someone is is trying to tell me something and is sugarcoating it, I'm 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 something happens in my brain where I'm it's it's like it's like a needle or I just I'm not saying I, I, I don't like it when I'm not saying don't be conscious about how your words come across. I'm I'm not saying that. You should be or social animals that is a skill that, that that's important. But when someone constantly sugarcoats things, I, it's like, I, how do I have an example? I don't Much like their dress sense. It's hard to talk about people without talking about the clothes they wear. For example, it's really dependent. See, I wasn't even thinking about what he said. So the thing about sugarcoating is, I is it, I, obviously it's it's really depend the person who is sugarcoating to you. You know what I mean? Like, like trying to tell someone that might not sound so mean in their mind, and trying to cushion it with like all these preemptive things you say before you say it. And I understand, you know, you're interacting with different people, and so you, you can't use the same. So it's just me personally. I just I I think that sugarcoating only only stands to waste time and i think if you are sugarcoating things constantly then you are probably around people who are very sensitive when it comes to uh allegations from other people how they think about cool. much you. like their dress sense i'm it's hard dead. to talk about people without talking about the clothes they wear. For example, when have you ever seen me without clothes? No, those videos were taken down about four years ago. Not no, they weren't. I got them. But not by me, by YouTube. On the other hand, it's almost impossible to paint an accurate picture of the clothing choices of both countries' populations. But there are some clothing items you'll see preventing people being naked in one country and not the other. That was Again, this goes differently. I'm pausing a lot, but no, whatever. This goes very differently with, with, say, someone from New York. But I feel like European people, maybe not, maybe British too, are, they look much more like they thought about their outfit before they went out, I think. I'm awful. Like, sometimes I, I, I'm so bad at, at not realizing how I look that sometimes I have to, like, stop myself before going out the door and, like, looking, like, to see if I look like a, a complete bum. Um, yeah. I was really poorly worded. So in America, people might, for example, be recognizable by the fact that they're wearing a flannel shirt, particularly in some of the northern states which have extreme cold and Germans. Moreover, Americans are more likely to wear sweatpants in public. Mm -hmm. The sweatpant people, which is an ancestry group that I forgot to mention, sometimes meet up at the gym, but more often Walmart. In Britain, we all just dress like Charlie Chaplin. I just, I don't, <laughs> I just, I don't, I can show you guys, I guess, like, I, I was just about to, to, like, see my giant pile of clothes over there, I, I was about to go through them and everything, it's just, when you wear sweatpants a lot, I just, I don't like how jeans feel, I, I, I sort, I like corduroys, actually, I need to buy some more, but, um, khakis are okay but khakis and jeans they're they're just not comfortable i don't like them i i don't like them and i feel like 
my dimensions are so like I have a pretty long torso, but like somewhat short legs and and short little T Rex arms, and so I can never like find clothes that fit me well. They either they either like the ends of of the of the T shirt like right up to here because I, I have a sort of wide torso and long torso but short limbs you know and so like I, I i can i either have to find a shirt that fits nicely to my if it's a long sleeve shirt to my wrists and have it so that the the up here it's like doesn't fit or i can have it fit nice up here but have it you know like this and and with pants i just like i i hate when i wear pants especially with sneakers like like a shoe like this i, I just don't like how it how it feel, feels or looks when you when you have like i feel like i have to wear like a, a tim's boot with with something like cac uh something like um or boat shoes what do you call them You know, and I just feel like with sneakers, long pants that aren't sweatpants just look a little strange on me. I don't know. Let's go. <laughs> at least the you Charlie Chaplin me? impersonators do. Oh, the there's Charlie an Chaplin. emphasis in Britain on style. And this is a luxury that we can afford because unlike America, we don't have weather that can kill bacteria. So depending on where you are, it might not be that unusual to see, say, a woman dressed more or less like Kate Middleton, and that includes Kate Middleton. Of course, we're talking cheaper versions of Kate Middleton's wardrobe, sure. or at least I am. Now, before I get carried away, I do not want you to get the impression that all British people are super stylish, right? I'm doing this video in my underpants. The thing I would say is that our casual clothes or our comfort clothes tend to be less baggy than they are in the United States. Absolutely and we agree probably with that. wear fewer baseball caps and more polo. Again, I, I'm nowhere near the level of qualifications that this guy has. I mean, that, one of the reasons I love this guy's channel so much is he's so qualified to talk about what I love seeing British people talk about, which is just comparing the two countries and who better to compare than this guy shirts. I told you British people like me don't like to generalize. I think in America baggy clothes are more accepted because A there are harsh winters and B Americans place more emphasis I think on comfort. That's why you'll see Americans way into their 70s still wearing sneakers with jeans. My grandfather in law I think there's much more of like a, a rebellious attitude in Americans maybe when it, it's like yeah I'm wearing no, scratch that. I, I don't know. Never mind. Way into their 70s, still wearing sneakers with jeans. My grandfather-in-law did that all the time. And I think if you saw that in Britain, that person would be considered eccentric. So th that's like me. What do you wear? What do you wear? Like, like nice shoes? I don't have nice shoes. And I don't really like... It's like, I, I, feel, I feel like I, I have to really... I need to go shopping, I guess. One of you guys can tell me if it's... Which, since we're talking about Britain, 50% of the population is eccentric. And if you thought that that observation was funny, then you're very easily amused. Is eccentric, like, flamboyant? Or, like, energetic? Slightly strange. Okay. You put the you in humor, especially if you're British. You may recall a while back I did a video on British versus American Hello. humor, but this focused on the televisual differences. Today, did we're talking that? about people. There have been numerous times in my life when I've laughed my absolute ass off in the company of both Brits and Americans to the extent that I can no longer comfortably sit down. But it's hard to deny that British people have a different sense of humor to American people. Go to my channel, Mr. McJibman, where I do more non-history related stuff like stand-up and sports and stuff. It's, I love watching British stand-up and trying to understand it's it. It's also a little hard to define. And I'm told it's pretty comical, me trying to understand, even though it that's not, I didn't mean it to be comical. I just really wanted to try and understand British idioms.
but apparently it's funny when I when I don't understand things. What that difference is. Americans often write in the comments that they love my dry British humour. And I always find it amusing that we have dry British humour because we also have wet British forecasts. But when you're talking to a British person, there are two ways that the humour can go. Either that politeness that we talked about earlier goes out of the window and gets rained on or there arises something known as self-deprecation. In the first instance, a good friend of mine might jokingly remark, All right, Lawrence, you wanker. I don't know too many Cockney people. Or in the second case of self-deprecation, a British person might say something like, I'm Lawrence and I'm a big wanker. That is a terrible example. I saw a, I might have recorded it and posted it too, but I, I was watching Stephen Fry explain a video of Stephen Fry, amazing. Uh, I love Stephen Fry explaining the difference between America and British comedy. It was quite a, a short video too, uh, but it, it was well said. It, and he, I, I, I might have seen a few scenes of Animal House. I'm aware of the movie, the kind of like frat style, frat house college in the 70s, I believe is when it came out. And how there's a scene where there's a staircase and this like jock guy is going down and there's this other guy in the staircase like playing the guitar or ukulele or something and then the the jock guy takes the uh the ukulele or guitar and just smashes it and and Stephen Fry he said like so Americans think it's funny to want to like want to be the guy you know athletic guy walking down the stairs and the british people look at themselves as like the guitar player the ukulele player like those are like the comedic situations and sort of like the Jerry Seinfeld. I really despise that kind of humor. Type in YouTube, like whether it's Friends or Seinfeld or whatnot, and type in like what Friends, Seinfeld scene, whatever, without um, uh, laugh tracks. I hate laugh tracks. What do? How is that a thing? And And it's just, it's so much so funny how sort of unfunny it is it's like the classic american has to like say a joke even if it's not and everyone's like ah ha, 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 got him next joke and that's something about that is just so uh, I... it's basically when people put themselves down for a comedic effect it's a powerful tool but it's not a tool often wielded by americans who i don't know maybe they see it as a weakness I've... right it's like it's like british people are more secure and Americans are more insecure, generally, where, um, like, American is more funny if you're like, ah, ha, what an idiot, look at this guy, and the other way around being like, wow, what an idiot I am, look what I just did, and I prefer the second part. I also found that Americans are less into their toilet humor, and that, maybe that means they're more mature. It does mean that, doesn't it? The sweatpant people notwithstanding. Whereas toilet humor is basically how British people communicate. Of course, this was once successfully parodied by Mike Myers, the comedian, not the serial killer. But in America, or at least in the Midwest, my attempts at toilet humor have often been met with TMI, which to my chagrin does not mean tickle me insane, but too much information. On the other hand, I think your average American is pretty good at wielding observational humor. A favorite weather-related saying, and I've heard this in various states, Cats is if you don't like the weather, oh, right. just wait five minutes. And they've got a point. Left my laundry hanging outside this morning. Tornado took it away. That's it for this episode. Let me know in the com that was more comments below if you've observed some of these characteristics of British and American people. And if you want to hear slash read more from this British person, then why not Love follow you, me Lawrence. on Twitter at Lost in the Pond US. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel so that my videos don't get lost in the pond. And as ever, a big shout out to all of my patrons who make these videos possible. Even before he had patrons, this guy was grinding it. He seemed to love it. And I'm so happy he blew up. And what was I going to say? This is a great video. I, I'm probably, this has got to be over 20 minutes or something. Um, whatever I was going to say, I forget. Uh, see you guys. Great video. Um, see you next time. Um, I'm going to try and remember. He said... Five minutes! And... But in America, or at least in the Midwest, my attempts... Americans are less into their toilet humor. Oh, this. Oh, yeah. I'm sort of... Like, with me, especially the past few years, where it's been me 
you know, trying to fight, figure out what I want to do and, and create this. And I'm a very, very introverted person. Think about the most antisocial person you know, and then look at them. And when you see me, you will see them as, as just the most outgoing. They're, you know what I mean? I'm extremely introverted. I'm a weird person. And so, you know, I, I live with my parents still. I, you know, making money now from YouTube, I can help out. And I'm getting to the point where if I wanted to, I, I could move out. But I honestly, I enjoy living here. And uh, if I can um, help support them and, and everything, that, that would just make me even happier. I, you know, why leave? Uh, but I do find that if I do go in public, I'm so used to being so comfortable that I'm sometimes I'm afraid of just blurting out something that just is not socially acceptable. And, uh, and, uh, my honestly you get poked fun of, uh, by my dad a bit about it. Uh, awesome. Great video. I'll be watching another one soon, guys. See you later.